know you were out in LA and things were not going just everything wasn't just going gangbusters. You were going to school out there. I was right? going you to school. You had this dream after. of music like everybody has. Of course out there everybody's going to be an actor or a screenwriter. Yeah. Which is like so hard. So you know I may have dabbled in the acting a little bit, but yeah. I didn't do very well. I can't act, okay? That's one thing people need to know about me. I'm not an actress at all. But I was wait while I was waiting for all of this to happen or make my big move to Nashville. I had to get two jobs. So I was working at a cigar club, which was really bad for me. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds so bad. And then how's Borman see you sing? Who's the manager? You manage his faith and yeah. different people. Yeah, he managed Faith. and How'd you get to him? him? Well, when I was living in California, um, Gary has a partner uh, named Steve Moyer. So I'm managed by both of them. Mm-hmm. They're both managers. And they both they also manage um, record executives, and so I was working with this guy named Julian Raymond, who um, produced Glenn Campbell's last record, uh-huh. and he was managed or is managed by my management. So uh-huh. he brought me into the office just to see if we had any, you know, anything good going on here. Is this something I need to continuously work with this girl, or is this something we just need to give up and let go? So I went in to sing for Steve. Moyer, he goes down the hallway and makes Gary Borman meet me and hear me sing. And Gary didn't want to meet me at first because he didn't want to manage any girl artists because we're dramatic and we're, you know, we're emotional creatures. We are. But he took a chance and met with me anyway and said my songs suck in the nicest way possible. And they did, you know, I mean. So you were singing songs you wrote? Yeah, I was singing songs I wrote Uh that weren't very, you know, they they weren't amazing, yeah. you know, and he you probably told me I wrote songs rope. that showed off your voice. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. So he could and tell so, mm-hmm. that you could sing. Yeah. So he had me um, meet with some writers to work on my songwriting. And uh-huh. I ended up writing this song called Safe. And he felt that this could get me a record deal. And he sent the song to the chairman of UMG, Mike Dungan. Yeah. And Mike, Mike Dungan came back and said, I want to meet her. And so CMA Fest, the kickoff of CMA Fest 2011 or 10, I think 11, 2011, I flew out to Nashville, sang from his office before he went to go to some of the stages and see the performances of his artists. And I sang for him. And by the time I got to the Riverfront stage, he had offered me a record deal. That's great. Thank and you. you know, Mike drinks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really good. You caught him on a good day. Oh, he's always and, on a good know, day. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking or not. <laughs> Mike, I've seen him in really great Mike rare and form. I started at Arista together when Ronnie and I first got signed. Oh, wow. The branding man. Mike was head of marketing at Arista then. So we've been go way back. a million miles together and we worked all those records together. Oh, and, wow. Uh, Yes, and we're still dearest friends, and we were neighbors forever, and I can't even tell you how much trouble we got into <laughs> together. So I can imagine, because just sitting here on this couch with you, I, <laughs> I'll i get in trouble with you myself. Oh my gosh, you act so bad. No, so that's super fun. <laughs> but, I mean, then you've, like, your first your first outing as I, as I read it, I think, was, like, at the White House. On, it was. On that big thing with yeah. the Dirks and even... Uh, Lyle Lovett, James Chris Chris Taylor Thompson, was James there freaking and, yeah. Taylor. Yeah, how oh cool was that? Oh my gosh, that was... What's going through your mind? I was freaking out. Like, that was my... The reason I think I even got to perform with that was... It was for um, PBS in performance at the White House. And they throw this special where they have a jazz night, um, rhythm and blues night, classical night, country night. And they approached my management because at the time they were managing Lady Antebellum, Keith Urban, which they still manage Keith Urban, Allison Krauss. um, And so I think they approached him about having Lady A or Keith Urban or Allison perform. And Keith and Lady A weren't available. So they said, well, we have this girl, Mickey, that you guys might like. So we sent in a reel and they came back and said we wanted to perform and we want her to perform Crazy by Patsy Cline. And I said, absolutely. And I got to sing it, and I and this is right when I was getting I had gotten signed with um, <clears throat> UMG, and so 
Dirk Bentley was also there. Um, Darius Rucker, um, a newly American Idol runner-up, um, Lauren Elena, and it was really cool to be a part of it. But it was really, really intimidating because so I never done anything like that. So, in spite of the fact that you're, you know, you're having your I'm not worthy moment because I'm the new kid on the block and whatever. What do you really tell yourself when you're about to make that performance? I prayed and I prayed that I wouldn't throw up on that stage. <laughs> <laughs> in front of, I'm not kidding. Were you feeling a little queasy? I, the whole time I was out in D.C. for four days and I did not eat four of those days. Seriously, it was like I was so nervous. All I did was drink wine at night to try to put me to sleep. And I went up there and and it was like I looked at the president. I looked at the first lady and I just sang, and it was like literally like a jacket of nerves came off of me. Like it was like a lift, and and then I sang, and it was just like, okay, I'm supposed to do this. Like if I can make it through this, like uh -huh. I can do it. And I walked out, and I went to the red room, and the makeup artist that was on, you know, that was hired for the day, uh -huh. followed me because I think she saw that it was what like is breaking the red down. Room? You know, the like they have like the green room, the uh -huh. white room, the red room. So a red room's like a green room. No, they're literally like red. It's a red room. Like, yeah, but it's like where food and makeup the, is, or no, what do it you was do in there. The well, the White House. You know, the White House has the different colored rooms. Mm -mm. Oh well, they have the Oval Office, and they have. Like, I mean, I've been there, but I don't hang out there or anything. Well, it was where we could be back there. Those were the rooms that were kind of open for us to kind of hang out with. Okay. So. I went past the green room where everybody was sitting, but the room is literally green. Uh -huh. I went to and the you red room. You don't like green. I love green. Well, why didn't you hang out in the green room? Because everybody was in there, and I was about to break down. Oh, you're, you were having you're a panic You're ruining attack. my story here I'm not, now. I'm just trying to understand. <laughs> 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 you, you have all these colored rooms, and you're bouncing around. And oh, I'm my God. Just, I'm, I'm trying just... to get to my story. Oh, okay. So I went into the red room. And I turned around and literally cried in the makeup artist boobs. She was really tall, and in I her, just like in her boobs. Literally, just <laughs> <laughs> literally, she was tall, and, and so I was just like a mess. Like she just kind of nuzzled mess. you in. Yes, just nuzzled me in. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. She, I've heard of that. She took yeah, that's a, it's a new thing. Bosom. You didn't know about that. I've, it's in the Bible. It's a new thing. <laughs> I cannot with you. I can't. Yes, it's in the Bible. Well, that was nice. And yeah. so y'all had your little moment. We had our little moment. And you're like, oh, my God. I'll Bor never forget it. Borman was right. He was I, right. I, I am a hot mess. I am a oh. hot mess. I am. And so, well, thank yeah. God it was a makeup person. Thank so God. she got you all cleaned then up She got again. me all cleaned up and ready to go again. <laughs> I was a mess, though. I really was. But then you started singing. I started singing. And the world was round again. The world was round again. And then we all sang Me and Bobby McGee. And that was really fun. Oh, how too. cool. With Chris. Yeah. He's one of my favorite people. He is so he nice. The coolest. I, I got to spend a little time with he and his wife, or with his wife while he was sound checking. She's cool, too. Oh, my God. And she's yeah. freaking beautiful. My gosh. But um, <laughs> just hearing her story about how they got together and how down to earth. They are, but they've like literally, I mean, Chris, Chris Sofferson has like changed the world I, with, you know, that oh, yeah. song, you know? Yeah. 